Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and we are making an updated video on testing round trip latency on the Apogee Ensemble Thunderbolt. So what we're gonna to do today is just go out of the Apogee from one of the physical outputs, and then back into a physical input to test round trip latency. That's basically hardware out and hardware back in. And we wanna show you that audibly by changing the buffer settings, and then we're gonna track it and show you on the timeline how the Apogee and Pro Tools work together to figure out any phase issues or any timing issues in that round trip latency. So we've got a send going out of uh, a line output, line three from the Apogee Ensemble. So it's a jack out and a jack back in. And then, uh, so it's sent here, I'll put it into pre-send as well. So I have my original kick here, and I have my other tracks on the solo safe, and the reason I've done that is you can hear the two kicks there. And I have my new one coming in here. Now at the moment that's running, and don't forget I've also got an application that's screen capturing this, and I've also got uh, Reaper running to catch the audio of this, this uh, set, so I've got two other applications in the background, so I'm pushing this a bit. So I'm running that at 64 samples, I could go to 32, let's see what happens, it shouldn't fall over, I hope it doesn't. And then I could put them both in and show you these in action, so now, that's both of them working together now. And there's a tiny bit of obviously latency there, but not enough. As I say, if we muted the kick drum, in terms of timing, not an issue at all. And let's see how far we can go. So we change that playback engine and we take that up to, let's say, 128 samples. We start to get a little bit of lag, but still usable. And then of course, if you went all the way up, you would have then 1024 samples. Now don't forget, since Pro Tools 11, the engine in the new uh, audio engine uh, is different. It has a different playback buffer than it has to a record buffer. So I can set a low record buffer and the playback buffer remains higher, which gives you the best of both worlds. So I can set this to 64. And get a very low latency when I'm recording. I'm not even using the Maestro mixer here, I'm using the actual internal native uh, processing within Pro Tools. There's no need for me to use the mixer at this point because the Thunderbolt is so fast on the Apogee Ensemble. But what I want to show you is if I then tracked it at any different uh, playback rate, so if I, let's get to 512, which is going to be out a bit, we can hear an audible difference if we put the second kick in, we can hear them snapping. So let me record that because I want to show you what actually then happens. If we record it, what we're actually hearing is the, record, the, the playback buffer setting there and that's why you can hear that short delay. However, once it's done and recorded, when I take this out of input and out of record and zoom right in, we will see that the maths has been done magically between the Apogee and Pro Tools and they are completely in phase with each other. As we just go in a bit and just check out any of those, we'll see they're very, yeah, literally in phase all the way. So that's good to know. So that's how it handles it. Again, thanks to Brad and the tech team at Apogee for helping us with this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon.